Hey guys, I just wanted to make a quick video about my absolute one of my absolute favorite EDC knives right now. One that's been really hyped by the community over the last couple years. And honestly, I resisted for a long time, and that's the Koenig Arius. Uh, this one happens to be the non-flipper version, and that's kind of um, perfect for me. I, I really don't like flippers on knives. I think they can really ruin the aesthetic. What's the way with the way they flip up? I know that uh, people, some people are big fans of them, but uh, honestly, it adds a lot of bulk to knives that often don't need it. Especially this knife that has this excellent um, reverse flick fuller, um, and this knife is remarkably smooth. Um, also, it has an incredible blade shape, really thin behind the edge, uh, an excellent slicer, and incredible ergos. Um, really fits nicely in my large, extra large gl glove size hands um, and honestly can't ask for something better for EDC. I'm going to do a couple quick size comparisons. I know everybody does that, but it's really helpful to me to see size comparisons on knives. And um, uh, so I, I grabbed a couple of knives that a lot of people have. Um, so let's open this beauty up. I'm going to put it this way so it lays a little bit more flat. So. Uh, this is a Koenig Arius, like I said, in M390, and it's the full-sized one. So first up, I've got a PM3 for size comparison. As you can see, the PM3 is quite a bit smaller. Uh, this one also is in uh, carbon fiber, not blue, but with blue accents. Pretty sweet. Uh, then I've got the uh, PM2, the big brother of the PM3. Um, the Koenig Arius is going to be a pretty similar size to this knife actually. Um, you can see that the PM2 actually uh, has a tiny bit more handle with the angle of the camera. It looks like uh, it has a lot more handle but a tiny bit more and a very similar size uh, blade uh, including cutting edge because the PM2 has, these, uh, has the, the front choil much like the Koenig Arius. Uh, and then lastly I'll show you a Unumzan Chris Reeves Umnum's on this one is in carbon fiber as well done by Shepard uh, on Instagram um, It is almost identical in size as Umnum's on uh, um, Could almost be completely lined up. I'd say that Umnum's on has a tiny bit more uh, handle and Obviously a little more cutting edge because the uh, Koenig has that big front choil that makes it so nice for slicing tasks So that's a little size comparison for you now, if we look at uh, the Koenig Arius, one of the big things I think that makes it such a good EDC knife is really this front choil. I know I already brought that up. Um, and that's why I think that the Arius should have been a non-flipper from the beginning, because when you have the flipper version, the flipper's down here, and you really lose a lot of that front choil. Arguably, you get more cutting edge because they can bring it back a little further, obviously, because there's no need for a space for a finger. But with that front choil, you just have this perf absolutely perfect grip that sits into your palm and you can have great slicing control and it is really truly an excellent EDC knife. Uh, this one is in that beautiful blue carbon fiber and I absolutely love the way that looks. I've, I'm a big fan of carbon fiber these days. It makes the knife extremely light for the size. This is a full size knife for sure, um, but it only weighs I think 3.9 ounces. Um, and that, those weight savings are super noticeable in the pocket. Uh, one thing that people complain about pretty often, I think, with these Koenig Arius is, is the pocket clip. Um, their tension is a little bit light on it. I'm not gonna be, uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I haven't really noticed any issues with retention with normal pants like um, jeans. It sits in the pocket pretty well. Uh, granted, I am just a office worker, so it's not like I'm running around or climbing telephone poles or whatever carrying my areas but it I've never had it like fall out or anything like that or ever had any stresses the only thing I've noticed with the pocket clip um, uh, for myself is that this gap between the pocket clip and the um, scale is pretty small so when I'm wearing kind of a pants that have a lot of material in the pocket, I feel like they bunch up underneath under this and they push the pocket clip out. So I, I, I worry a little bit about bending that pocket clip. Um, the other thing obviously with these knives that people love is the action. And this knife is no exception. It is a killer, killer uh, reverse flick action. Um, as you can see, I'm actually doing a double reverse flick with two fingers. Because of the, sh the shape of this fuller, 
that makes that double reverse flick really easy. And I find it um, a little easier on my uh, fingers to do two instead of just the one. You can absolutely do the one, um, but the detent is actually kind of strong on this area. So that's the only other kind of negative thing I would say about this knife is the detent is not just strong, but it's also really poppy. And, and the reason that is, is because the detent ball in this knife um, actually drops more than halfway into the detent hole. And um, you can actually really tell when that happened. A lot of knives with a detent, like uh, take this um -nums on, it breaks away really smoothly because a detent ball just barely sits into that hole and just keeps it in place. The detent ball on the areas actually sits really, really deeply into the hole, over halfway into the hole. Um, and you can see that there's actually a little bit of wiggle here because it sings so deeply and then when it breaks away it really snaps away and you can actually hear the snap let me show you bring this closer to my mic yeah you can hear the snap on this knife when the detent breaks away uh what that means is you actually are able to really build a lot of pressure and this knife just flies out um and it's it's pretty satisfying to deploy but also what that means is this knife is extremely susceptible to lock bar pressure I'm just gonna put a little lock bar pressure on here. I'm not pressing very hard with my thumb, but I am I am pressing and you can see how difficult that is to then deploy. Uh, what that means for me in particular is I actually have a really hard time thumb deploying this knife. Um, you really have to really crunch your fingers back so you're not touching, even my pinky could be in the way there, and dig your fingernail into the top of the fuller. Uh, you can thumb deploy it, but I have a really hard time with it and I'm actually basically incapable of rolling this out. The one other thing I want to bring up about this knife in particular, mine in particular, is that I actually have mine on washers. Um, there's no problem with bearings. I just really prefer washers over bearings. Uh, I know that's kind of sacrilegious. People say leave a knife on bearings um, if it's made with bearings and leave a knife on washers if it's made with washers. Um, I, I can see that argument, but to me, the benefits of having a washer knife with the durability of uh, not getting grit in there um, and kind of it being self-lubricating with PB washers is really just uh, outweighs the benefits of having the, the smoothness, of, smoothness of the bearing. And honestly, with this um, knife, when it was on uh, bearings, it was a straight guillotine. It's still extremely smooth, but you have to actuate, you have to kind of start it off with your finger there. It still will shake shut for sure. Anyways, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this knife because I absolutely love it. And this is kind of, you know, experimental video. I love making videos, uh, but never have made any knife videos. I'm an avid knife collector. Uh, let me know what your thoughts on the Koenig Arius is in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and have a fantastic day.